Hey, welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to do our first example of Bayes' theorem to see how that actually works, how the theorem actually works. So, here we have a set of events. First of all, we're going to toss a coin, and it can either be heads or tails. If we toss a heads, we'll grab a marble out of this bag. If we go tails, we'll grab a marble out of that bag. And in the left bag, there's two blue marbles, three red marbles. In the right bag, bag number two, there's eight blue marbles and two red marbles. Now, we're going to reverse things, and we're going to say, what if we know that a red marble was picked? So A is now red. Then what is the probability that we threw, uh, we tossed the heads, or what is the probability that we tossed a tail in the, with the coin? So we have priori knowledge that we picked a marble out of either bag one or bag two. We don't know which bag we picked it from, but we do know that the marble was red. All right, so what's the probability we threw our heads or tails? Well, here's the equation, and so we can then say the probability of a sub i would then be heads, realizing or provided that we pulled a red marble out of the bag. Out of one of the two bags, we don't even know which one. We just know that it was a red, red marble. So this has to be equal to the probability that we picked a sub i, and so a sub i would then be heads, right? That we threw a heads times the probability that we uh, had a red marble provided that a sub i that we had a heads. So what is the probability that we had a red marble provided that we tossed a heads divided by, now we have to sum all the possibilities up here in the denominator. So first of all, we're going to have i equals to 1. And that would be that we have heads, and i equals to 2, that means we have tails. So in this case, it will be the probability that we have heads times the probability that we picked a red marble, provided that we had heads, plus the probability, now we let i equals 2, which means tails, the probability that we have tails, times the probability that we, pull, that we have a red marble, provided we tossed tails. Okay, now we're ready to plug in some numbers and see what we get. So, what was the probability that we have heads, that we toss heads, provided we pulled a red marble out of one of the two bags? Okay, the probability of getting heads, that's one out of two, because it's a coin, it only has two sides, times the probability that we pulled a red marble, provided we had heads. So, if we had heads, there's three red marbles, a total of five marbles, so it would be three out of five. The probability that we pull the red marble, provided we had heads, is three out of five. And we divide the whole thing by the probability that we have heads, which is one half, times the probability that we pull the red marble, provided we have heads, that would still be three over five, because there's three red marbles out of five possible marbles, plus the probability that we threw tails, which is one half, times the probability we pull the red marble provided we threw tails. That means we pull one out of here, and there's two reds out of ten marbles, so it would be times two out of ten. Okay, what does that give us for probability? Well, let's see here. Can we simplify this a little bit? Well, this can simplify, so that's one-tenth plus, that would be three-tenths, that would be four-tenths in the denominator. In the numerator, we get uh, three-tenths, so 3 tenths divided by 4 tenths would be 3 quarters. So that is the probability of having tossed heads provided we pull the red marble. Okay, now, what is the probability that we toss tails provided we pull the red marble? Now, logically, you would think it would be the other one quarter, but let's make sure that that's indeed the case. So here we take the probability that we toss tails times the probability that we pull the red marble provided we toss tails divided by the probability that we had heads and the denominator of course will look exactly the same times the probability that we picked a red marble provided we had heads plus the probability that we toss tails times the probability that we pulled the red marble provided we toss tails and so now let's see what we come up with so the probability we toss tails is one half times the probability that we pull the red marble provided we toss tails. So when we toss tails, we pull the red marble, that's 2 out of 10 prob probability. 2 out of 10, not 1, but 2 out of 10. 
divided by, and of course you notice that the denominator looks exactly the same, so again that would be one half times the probability to get a red marble divided with three heads, that's three out of five, plus probability of throwing a tail times the probability of getting a red marble provided with three tails, which is two out of ten, and that is therefore equal to, notice that would be one tenth divided by four tenths, which is equal to one fourth. And sure enough, there's the other one fourth probability. When you add them all up, of course, it should be a probability of one to either throw heads or tails, so it does appear to be correct. But there's a nice example of how we use Bayes' theorem to try to determine what the initial event was, or the outcome of the initial event, provided we have a priori knowledge of the secondary event. So again, you have a coin, you toss it. If it's heads, you pull a marble out of the left bag. If it's tails, you pull a marble out of the right bag. Notice that we pull a marble, and now we know what that color marble was. It was red. So now, if it was a red marble, what was the probability that we tossed heads? If it's red marble, what is the probability we toss tails? And this is how you apply Bayes' theorem to figure that out. Pretty slick. And now on the next video, we'll work with the blue, with the blue marbles to see if we get the same result.